So how a basic cybersecurity investigation is done using a SIEM. So an investigation starts with an observation. You will then use this observation observation to generate questions and thus generate further observations. Uh, we'll be following the scientific process uh, as shown here, where we'll start with an initial observation and kind of move uh, in this cyclical area here, question, hypothesis, answer, just uh, repeatedly coming up with new questions until we finally arrive at our ultimate conclusion. So there's also uh, divergent and convergent thinking. So the divergent thinking is the initial observation should diverge out into multiple questions. So we're creating more choices, more questions, and then using those to create more questions. And then uh, eventually those are going to converge uh, to making decisions based on the uh, what we've observed and what we've uh, answered. Okay. So now I will uh, demonstrate. So let's assume that we received an alert for an unknown HTTP request. Um, so an unusual HTTP request was requested and there's no playbook written, let's just say, hypothetically. Um, we received this log in correspondence with that alert. And when we open it up, we can see what's going on here. So if we just start extracting the useful fields, um, so that might be the HTTP response, the request. And we're just going to pull out anything that we might find useful. Okay, so if that is a HTTP response, uh, HTTP request, then that is probably why it is triggered because that is not a usual alert. So what we can do is we can filter that value out and just have a look. And indeed, it should show that the verb is a HTTP request. So if we just include those again, we'll get our original logs back. Okay, so if we look at here, what is the what can we really pivot off of? It's going to be this IP here. There's nothing of else that we can really use. Um, so this will be normally like things like users, IPs, host names is what we're going to start our pivoting off by. See, there's 16,000 requests from this IP. That's probably just a little bit too much. Yeah, maybe up to about a thousand is what you can really look through as a human. Um, we can kind of we so we want to we want to reduce the amount of noise here. So how are we going to do that? We can have a look through these fields um, to figure out what we would might want to do. I see there's a lot of GET requests, but that's that's only keep in mind the first out of 500 logs. But we'll try that first. Okay, so now we see some POST requests from this IP. You can see some interesting stuff at the top, so <laughs> backdoor.jpg, um, all kinds of stuff. If we have a look through here, um, I'm already, even 160 can be a bit much if you're trying to be quick. So let's get rid of uh, 404 because that is essentially denied, it didn't go through. 400 as well. Okay, so now we can see uh, more of what's happening here. Okay, Nikto test. So if you know what Nikto is, it's a it's a scanner. So we can see some scanning activity has likely occurred. Okay, um, and this backdoor.jpg is potentially what we might want to look at next. Um, so I've already done that here. I've got um, this request. Just it's a double-sided wildcard not necessarily the most efficient um, search, but it worked and there really just wasn't much to pivot off of. So we can see here that the first instance of it is here. So get images only, they put in the URL or the URI. This potentially malicious, uh, this website where they might have downloaded that backdoor. So this would be an IOC. Um, we can see that they have accessed their their um, 
they've backed all successfully after downloading it. So 200. And then they've done uh, some commands. They've at attempted some commands. So who am I? That's a 200 response code. So from these logs, we can see that this command, this, this URL was successful. We can maybe assume based on how we think that this malicious script would work that that, that who am I command probably worked. Uh, same with this getting the slash etsy password file and pwd command. And then they start enumerating, so ls commands, cat commands. Now, what else have they got going on here? We just keep looking. Okay. So maybe they've uh, started downloading and stealing data from our organization and uploading some more. We can also, because uh, we have in this this one here, we have gotten rid of the get request. Let's let's invert this filter to look for the get request. See if there's any more data that we might have missed. Uh, we can already kind of tell that this is malicious and we probably have been um, compromised in some sense. The 700 alerts here, uh, events here, it's a bit much to look through, but we can sort of do it. Um, any of these we can URL decode. So if I copy that and I take this over to Cyberchef and I paste it, URL decode, we can see in clear text what's happening. So upload form at the uh, directory mm -hmm. so it's a get request they might have been getting those files and I'm just gonna scroll through because I guess that's really all I can do there's just not too much I can pivot off of to remove reduce that noise Um, so this could be scanning activity of them enumerating the website. That's what we can sort of see there. You can see um, that backdoor slash Etsy password. Here you can see where they may have compromised the system. Cert.net. So that's uh, again related to that Nikto scanner from before. So just more scanning activity. Again, you can see that they're trying some, they're just enumerating our system. Uh, that, as you can see, that was denied, but they were trying that. So they're, they're just trying all kinds of uh, random attacks. So here you can see uh, cross-site scripting. Here you can see a directory traversal attempt. Again, cross-site scripting. This is probably related to the Nikto scanner. Again, more cross uh, directory traversal. So. This is again probably directory traversal. Let's have a look. Yep, directory traversal. Yeah, enumeration, classic enumeration <laughs> robots.txt. Um, more scanning activity. So looking at our backdoor, which is where we see our first uh, indicator of actual compromise here, that that uh, first evidence of actual compromise, we can see that it seems to be related to this get images only. That's the first instance uh, related to backdoor, when we see backdoor. So if we now do a request for related anything related to this get images only, we can see that, okay, so the attacker has discovered this website, uh, this uh, page on the website. They then attempt to use that. They upload uh, just some random image, I guess, some PNG image. Um, it works. They do it again. They upload another image. Um, they then try to upload their webshell.php to the image. Maybe that didn't work for some reason, even though they got a 200 response code. Um, it just must have not worked, so they've renamed that 
to backdoor.jpg.php and that's when we then see um, the rest of the and then they, they execute commands and stuff so essentially what we can sort of see that has happened is this attacking IP has used a Nikto scanner and just other website enumeration techniques to scan our website they've discovered this vulnerable page and they've tested it, uploaded some images, and then they've uploaded their backdoor.jpg in which they have then performed other activities, so commands, who am I, and then finally they have probably exfiltrated um, data as I've shown previously. So from here we would, we it is malicious, uh, we depending on what our organization SOPs are, so standard operating procedures, we would decide on what to do next. So, would we just write a few sentences describing what we found and then escalate it? Maybe we could create a timeline of events. Uh, maybe there's a ticket or a template that we can fill out. Um, or what uh, threat escalation procedures do we have? Am I just a level one analyst that just levels uh, forwards this up to level two? Or am I going to uh, activate the CSER team? Maybe I'd do more investigations, so I'd have to go to the actual device that was supposedly compromised and inspect that and determine if it's compromised before activating the CSER team. So some tips. Generally, you know, never panic. One time I escalated an incident as a high priority incident. Uh, when if I'd just done five more minutes of investigating, I would have discovered that that it was just a Nessus scanner. Something you may have seen me do is duplicating tabs. So using the middle mouse button on the refresh button can help you uh, duplicate the tabs, so you can always get back to where you were before. Uh, it helps you do trial and error. And here's some blue teaming practice. So please check out Blue Team Labs online. It's a pretty good learning platform um, that's still being developed. Uh, Blue Team Blue Team Labs dot online. Uh, it's where I got my initial hands-on tools. So apart from just learning the theory, doing things like Security Plus and uh, Uni, I got some time on the tools here, which really helped me land my first job. Because my uh, first job in the job interview, they asked me to do some log analysis, and lucky I'd done that here. Um, yeah, and it's quite cheap. I think it's about 15 euro a month. Um, and they also have some free um, investigations and challenges and stuff here. And quite a few platforms, so uh, some incident response, for digital forensics, uh, security operations, and some malware reverse engineering. Um, and there's a pretty fun point system and uh, you can put a link to your profile on your LinkedIn and things like that.